Yo, what up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be reacting to Beyond Meat, how the plant best pioneer became a stock market loser. What went wrong? Let's get into it. At the beginning of 2021, Beyond Meat's stock price was here. But now, a big bite has been taken out of that. It's fallen by more than 90% in just under two years. Mm -hmm. Despite a promising debut on Wall Street, celebrity endorsements... Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How do you go from $186.83 January 2621 to $13? Man. See, that's why I me mean, I don't invest whenever it's an IPO. Like you never know where things go and, and a lot of hype like with this product. So you better be careful with your money moving forward. By more than 90% in just under two years. Despite a promising debut on Wall Street, celebrity endorsements. So glad and a growing presence in restaurants and supermarkets. During the last year, Beyond sales have slumped. Just in the 12 weeks ending October 8th, grocery sales declined by 21%, even though the wider category only fell by eight. That indicates that there's something foundational happening at the company, that it's more than just the consumer trend. So what went wrong? Yeah. Well, before I figure out, for me, what, what, I, what I realized with a lot of this Beyond products is it, you cannot create a substitute for meat. You have to come up with a whole different product. If you ask me, like, what do you have to do to fix it? So it, it, it's like, oh, here's a beautiful way of cooking cauliflower. Rather than saying, well, you like chicken. We've created vegetables that taste like chicken. Like, how's that possible without chicken flavoring? You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> But are you saying don't eat meat? No, what I'm saying is let's not eat animal protein. Okay, great. Beyond was founded in 2009 by CEO Ethan Brown. The goal? To create a healthier, more humane, more earth-conscious alternative to meat. If we were to reduce meat consumption globally by 25%, we could address a huge amount of the climate change problem. They're looking to appeal to meat eaters with a product that they are intending to look and cook and taste just like meat. Beyond pushed to have their products in meat cases, right next to the actual thing, starting in 2016 with a burger in select Whole Foods and gradually moving into more supermarkets. The company also worked early on to get their products into the public eye, partnering with restaurants like Del Taco, Dunkin', KFC, and TGI Fridays. There was a lot of hype, a lot of buzz around this product. It was sort of the cool thing that people wanted to try out and have on their backyard grills for a minute. The company attracted big name partners like Leonardo DiCaprio and Snoop Dogg before going public in 2019. Beyond success was driven by Brown, who pushed for rapid and relentless innovation, an idea borrowed from the tech sector. Everything we do is around how do we get people to think and act more urgently? What I'm interested in is becoming that larger company. I have a goal to make this a $40 billion company in terms of revenue. Beyond this. See, one thing that I've that often fascinates me with these companies and these leaders is a lot of times how people are removed from society and from reality. As a meat eater myself, like somebody who I'm thinking they were targeting as a customer, like there, there are certain things that I look for. Like if I'm looking for chicken, man, I just want the chicken to taste like chicken. So if you're gonna present me an alternative, don't make it be like, oh, Stop eating chicken, start eating Beyond, and then, because that's how you lose me. I'll try it for my friends and for everybody around me, but it's not something that you can keep me long term, you know? Business model focused a lot on growth. They wanted to introduce a lot of products to market. They wanted to, you know, capture market share and have their products be the one that got in front of consumers. By the end of 2020, the company's sales grew to almost 407 million. But that push for growth came with mounting expenses. At the same time net revenue was growing, the company reported $1.1 billion in debt, and it still wasn't profitable. Their cost structure then just outpaced sales. So essentially, they wound up over-investing for business that hasn't yet developed. Problems with the pace of production were starting to show. Some current and former employees at Beyond told the Wall Street Journal that the rush to get products to market came with a disconnect between the teams that created products and the ones that had to produce them. Ethan Brown and other executives would show these 
products that had been made by hand in small quantities in their labs. They would show them to customers, to restaurants, and to retailers, and generate you know a lot of excite excitement about these new innovations based on these prototypes. But then their commercialization team would receive the new innovations and actually you know really struggle to commercialize or to scale up these products. Ah, well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing with business. Like, we run a little like production company, and my friend pops up with all these ideas, and I'm the one who has to figure out how we're going to produce and execute these things. And that's the funny thing about business is, is if you're creative, if you're if you're a passionate visionary, you just want to create, create, create. But the thing is, business doesn't move as quick. You know, like you gotta find the capital, you gotta find the way to make the essentially the value chain cost effective as much as possible to be able to bring the product at a certain quality to the customers. And that takes time and that takes a lot of like thoughtfulness. So if you're just coming up every single day with a new product that somebody has to figure out how we're going to create it, you create a mess, man. Example of problems is a version of dinner sausages that hit shelves in 2020 and sagged when stored vertically. Insiders at the company said the product didn't go through sufficient testing. According to those current and former employees, some customers were turned off by the appearance and didn't like the new flavor or feel, and the company eventually had to pull them from stores, according to internal emails. Beyond also struggled with manufacturing for new products like chicken tenders and jerky. Former and current employees also said the rush to market led to a lot of waste. Equipment was purchased that wasn't needed. Packaging for new products would be printed before nutritional facts were confirmed and had to be discarded. And European expansion struggled because of the food's limited shelf life. Some at the company attributed these problems to Brown's leadership. A lot of employees that we spoke to said that he has really struggled to manage Beyond's growth. And that in particular, he really struggled with planning and prioritizing and sticking to the company's priorities. And that led to a lot of confusion and frustration among employees. Some former and current employees said that Brown is an open-minded leader who sets clear plans for the company, and Beyond's board chair said he supports Brown. A spokesperson from Beyond previously said in a statement to the Wall Street Journal that the company operates from a three-year strategic vision and an annual plan. By the end of 2021 and beginning of 2020, yeah, You can already see the problems, man, because if you're building a business to scale, right? And the other thing is like opportunity Opportunity waits for no one. So it's like you're trying to capture that opportunity as quick as possible. But then the capacity of your business just slows you down. But as a CEO, you also have to understand what's the capacity of the business and operate to your limits. Two, beyond stock price fell as grocery sales slipped. Yeah. The company had scaled up its supermarket presence after the COVID-19 pandemic hurt its food service business. And so the fact that sales are down at grocery you know, just is a significant, um, a significant problem for the business. Their push to get more products in grocery stores also resulted in some expensive production. The company said a jerky product, made in partnership with PepsiCo and launched in March, initially had a complex and high cost manufacturing process. In November, Beyond said that the jerky had reduced the company's gross profit by nearly six million in the third quarter. By September, 2022, Beyond's stock price hit a low. They are losing more and more money each quarter. They're amassing debt. They're sort of having a, a run of bad luck. Beyond was also losing market share to competitors. In the same period in October that Beyond's grocery sales declined, rival Impossible Foods sales rose. Beyond is still figuring out how to scale down as it moves forward. The focus on being first to market is obviously really important, but rushing the process has its consequences. In November, Brown said that the company would focus on their core products. He previously announced that they would be shifting to a more sustainable growth model, which included cutting 19% of their staff. The path forward in this environment is clear, and at its foundation is a pivot from the growth above all operating model that has characterized our business to date to one that prioritizes positive cash flow and sustainable growth. In a previous statement to the Wall Street Journal, a spokesperson said, the pace and intensity of our innovation is not for everyone. It does, however, produce extraordinary results. The shift away from growth is a major change in mindset for the company, but some think that scaling down will help it stay afloat. Well, yeah, for me, like when it comes to running a business, my, my belief is always you have to stay cash flow positive. Whatever you do, you know, you, you, you got to create room for risk, but 
I feel like 50% of your business should just be focused on making sure you can pay your bills, you have enough cash in the bank to stay afloat, be able to pay your rent for a year, be able to pay your, your employees, <laughs> and make sure that you know what keeps what keeps us at work. Understandably, you want to grow, understandably, you want to do all the impossible things and, and achieve everything, be first to market. But you gotta move at your own limits, you know. So companies such as Beyond Meat, like you have a lot of convincing to do to people to convert them. And in, with such a finicky product, such as a meat thing, because, you know, sometimes people go, especially like right now is the time, you know, when people are setting resolutions to attract people and be like, hey, here's an alternative to meat, try this. And then when they try it and your product is great, then you have clientele that will stay forever. But then once you're, you're, you're you start putting poor quality out there and, and someone's first time trying it, they're like, yo, why should I give up on my meat and, and join this? But I think this serves as a lesson to all of us, especially business owners, to understand that cash flow is number one, followed by growth. Don't just go for growth because you die in debt, man. Like you keep working, but you don't even see a dime. And But if you're making millions, <laughs> still, man, like, yeah, I, I really wish them the best. I'm not a customer, but... My, my my friends are, you know, they make me eat a lot of Beyond. I don't like it. I don't like the way it tastes. I feel like it tastes horrible. Um, you cannot convince me that what I'm eating is meat. Meat tastes like meat. And, you know, Beyond tastes like Beyond. It tastes horrible. Like, I can't do it. I wish them nothing but the best. I love seeing small businesses rise to the top and do what they need to do. And we just study the, the um, strategies and see what's happening. Anyway, let me know in the comment section which other articles you guys would like me to check check out and i'll definitely be seeing you in the next one happy 2023 everybody